You're absolutely uh, right there, um, distinguished treasurer. Uh, challenging wrongdoing in our society is a civic responsibility for each and every citizen. And that's exactly how active citizens are created. Police brutality and the culture of impunity uh, in our society must be such that our laws and our policies and what we bring out of these things reflect society. Talking about the urban population in Africa, for example, because when Nigeria sneezes, Africa catches cold. The Africa definitely will catch cold. So the urban population in Africa is estimated at 43.4% with the current population at 1.3 billion, growing at 2.49% per annum, projected to be 2.5 billion by 2050. So truly, the world is a global village, with Nigeria hitting over 400 million in the same year, of which more than 70% will be youth between 15 to 35 years old. This has led to challenges with policing, high crime rates, dereliction of infrastructure, congestion and acute employment, especially in highly populated urban centers, with an increasing youth population in geometric progression, where one-third are unemployed, one-third vulnerably employed, one-sixth are in wage employment, and 50% underemployed. 80% of our population are stuck in the informal economy. A survey of women aged 20 to 24 from 16 countries in Africa reveals that women are still not empowered, and Nigeria is no different. Imagine over 15 million children are out of school, mostly skewed to the northern part of the country. What precisely do we then expect from our future, given this reality? These are people attacked daily by organized crime syndicates within our derelict, anachronistic, and heavily partisan police structure. Let's look at our civic registration and vital statistics, which is in shambles, as it were, and has been left deliberately unharmonized just to reinforce the culture of commercializing every engagement of government with the citizenry. People want to ask questions like, what exactly is the uh, uh, right of a citizen in Nigeria? What exactly is government giving to me? What's the value of my citizenry? Government gives absolutely nothing and attempts consistently to tax the air that we breathe. Let's not even start with the huge healthcare access problem. So my position is, is simple. We are advocating that we need to begin to create or galvanize the political will necessary we need to begin to build that gap or bridge you know, that, that, that uh, covers the institutional gaps strategically for the sakes of all our children. And how do we start this? First of all, we need to create a critical sense of urgency, their awareness campaign, and development of social services and pro bono legal representation nationally for timely interventions, taking advantage of our mobile connectivity to reach ears, eyes, hearts, and minds. It is imperative that we surgically need to raise a critical mass of transformational, youthful leaders and enlightened followers who are easy to govern, difficult to rule, and impossible to enslave towards the delivery of the set mandates in the areas so highlighted. Secondly, it is also necessary that we explore the extant laws that address the issues of concern. This will inform the route of the solution, benefits, and the eventual beneficiaries from that solution. So let us look at this together, and then let me get your takes from the things you've been hearing in society based on uh, society's uh, engagement with the police. Well, for me, you know the point where you said commercializing every activity in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and then you're wondering, ah, what does Nigeria even give to me? Everything as a, you, just the other day I was thinking, okay, I have to go and renew my, nation, my, my what's it called, the driver's yeah, license. Nice. You renew this, you renew that. You re Everything is commercialized. It's, it's just wearying. It's, it's such a burden sometimes to, to be a citizen here. Yeah. And I yeah. really understand what you mean when you're talking of transformative youth, when you're talking of the burden of unemployment on the nation, the fact that this, this, we owe it to our youth, to our children, to be able to give them something just as they finish. And if they're not getting, the, the something I mean is employment, if they're not getting that, then what is that gap 
in between when they're unemployed and when they, I mean, when they leave school and get proper employment. Precisely, again, what about the quality of education that we have now that prepares them almost zero level for life after school? Yeah. That's but also important, you know. I think for me, it's, it's deeper than, you know, we always see it. Um, this didn't just start overnight, right? Mm -hmm. Young people don't have the sense of ownership. Right. And, and like when I mean ownership, I mean understanding that you're a Nigerian and you have rights. Yeah. That wasn't thought in school. No. So, I mean, when people expect us to just become magicians, like where... But that used to be civic education. Yes. Yeah, which yeah. Is yeah. 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 But what was the yeah. content of that? It was loaded, I remember. I, 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 I can't remember anything that has to do with, oh, you know, you're, you're a Nigerian, be proud. You know, the entire time when I was in school, like primary school, we couldn't wait for the, the National Anthem. We, did, we never actually said it with, with our heart. We just mm -hmm. recite it and then go to your class. I was waiting for that perfect time where they, where, where they start singing the, the matching song to the class, which everybody wants to play with. Means. You know, like, <laughs> nobody actually started to say, you know what, this, this is what the National Pledge is. This is how important it, it is. I went to Russia and I had this amazing experience. There was a five year, 10 year old playing with a robot. He was trying to design something. I mean, this guy's, you know, young, cute kid. So the first thing you want to do as, a, as an adult is, hey, what's up, high five, right? Nice. I was going with my high five. This guy held my hands hmm. and shook my hands like this. Properly. Like, the grip, I was, <laughs> I, I, could, <laughs> I couldn't speak. I was like, oh my God. He understands who he is. Mm. They put it in them from, 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 it, from, from the early stage that you are, you're Russian. The interesting thing is, okay, um, I'm a, an early years practitioner and Everything we're talking about has to start from the basics. Yeah. Who, who am I? Mm. Um, what's my identity as a Nigerian? Yeah. Do you understand? These things are so core that from the foundation, from a two, three year old, mm -hmm. he should know what it is that he stands for as it grows to the primary, secondary and everything. Mm -hmm. So the aspect of um, you being cheated or something, you would know based on what the education, the, what yeah. you've been trained to be, yeah. then the awareness for different aspects of the people in, 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 in places of authority, like yeah. the policeman yeah. or this and that, the training, mental yeah. training of who you are representing, as yeah. opposed to you looking at the citizen as an opponent, yeah. is always what we see. But, you know, everything has to be with training, understanding and what it is that you are standing for. Because if we don't have those aspects of going back to the basics, the education um, sector, the training in organizations, even in our own personal organization, yeah. who am I, what's my identity mm. in this organization? Mm. Like Plus TV, what is it that we're known for mm. here? You know, those things are very, very important. Like I tell people, I say I'm Nigerian by birth, African by origin, but citizen of the world. Mm. So whatever I have, I'm carrying it to every place I go. Mm. Not just the passport, the way I behave, mm -hmm. the way the young boy shook you. Mm. All those things are what has to happen in our own mm. space. Yeah. Do you understand? Right. If not, it won't just what, so what is the identity of a Nigerian? Yeah. No, and I share, oh, Nafisa, you were yeah, I to totally understand what you're saying because um, I wasn't, I didn't have the opportunity to go through civic education in school. What I had was government and, you know, that was the best they could give me at that point in time. I went for my NYC in Ibadan and I discovered that political education, civic education was something that wasn't being taught in the syllabus and I thought that adults were even making that mistake mm. when it comes down to voting decisions because if you don't understand the system of governments in which your, con your country operates then you literally know nothing no matter how much education you have. Mm -hmm. So I, there was a project that I did during my NYSE year basically going to schools in Ibadan and talking to the senior secondary school students, because those were the ones that were going to be able to vote in the next election about civic education. So we, I basically went, wrote down a syllabus, wrote down a curriculum, took it to the schools for about a month and said, this is what I mean to teach your students. I mean to be free of charge. I mean to give them books. At the end of the day, we'll give them scholarships. But let's start from here. So it went down to the real basics. Basics. Was what it is, successful? I'm just. It, it, it was. <laughs> it was. To know. Yes, it was because they were very interested. They were. It was a new experience for them in the sense that this was something that nobody has taken time out mm. to teach them. We went down to the basics. What is patriotism? Tribalism? Mm. The ordinary things that you see in the marketplace, but you mm. don't know the terms in which to qualify it. Mm. 
mm. you know, basic things like that, that yeah. they don't even understand. And these are people in SS2, SS3. So it was a whole lot. So this is a really important conversation. Right. I, I think it boils down to understanding these things and then putting everything together in a way that mm. we can have a policy that we can now live by because we are actually engaging culture. Mm. When a problem is hydra-headed, one strategy can be to tackle it at the root. After the break, Nafisa tackles the root of why girls don't want to run for political office. Over to you, Nafisa. The button is in your hands. Always nice to see you anyways. <laughs> Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. a terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news.